Well, Razorback fans, it's a Wednesday. We got to do it. I know you don't think it's going to happen, but we got to do it. <sighs> what if Arkansas beats Alabama on Saturday? You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. And I know here on the Locked On Razor X podcast, it's always so much fun to talk about, which we'll actually do some basketball stuff uh, at the end of the at the end of the podcast, because I feel like that's also getting a lot of people's attention. But, um, you know, it's a Wednesday, and sometimes I throw out the what-if party or the what-if question, and sometimes we've done it on a Friday. It just doesn't roll off the tongue as well if it's a what-if Friday. But with Arkansas playing Alabama this weekend, uh, I mean, I wanted to do it. Uh, I wanted to ask it. I would ask even if the Arkansas Razorbacks were 0-6 at this point or 6-0. and uh, Instead, they're 2-4. and But just simply asking the question of what if Arkansas beats Alabama. Now, for those of you who may be new to this podcast, or maybe you're new to your Razorback fandom, or maybe you don't really know the history of Razorback football, as well as some others, you know, whatever the reasons may be. Here's the reality of Arkansas and Alabama. Arkansas has not beaten Alabama and football since 2006, since the George W. Bush administration. I was a senior in high school the last time that Arkansas beat Alabama. There are students at the University of Arkansas that weren't even alive the last time Arkansas beat Alabama in 2006. That's a reality. That's a real thing. And here we are. Once again, Arkansas taking on the Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa at 11 a.m. Nick Saban's still there. Uh, they may not be the, the dominant team that they've always been, but they're still Alabama. They're still really good. And honestly, I don't think Arkansas is going to win this game. I'm not going to pick them to win this game. I don't think anybody is going to pick them to win this game, considering how Arkansas has played and also how Alabama is. But that's what makes this podcast so much fun at times, right? Is to talk about the what if game. What if Arkansas beats Alabama? So to take you back on a little history, Nick Saban took over as the head coach in 2007 at Alabama. And Arkansas lost that game to the Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa by, I believe, it was a three-point game. And since then, Arkansas has never beaten Nick Saban since he's been at Alabama. In fact, there's only been two occasions, I guess now, or three occasions now, where Arkansas has lost by only one possession. It was in 2010 when they lost 24-20. It was in 2014 when they lost 14-13. And it was also in 2021 when Arkansas went on the road, and I believe the final score was 42-35 in that one. I guess I have the... Winsipedia page up here. Yeah, it was 42-35. But in the other cases, Arkansas lost last year where they were actually in the game a little bit in the fourth quarter, but they got blown out. They lost 49-26 last year. 2020, 52-3. 2019, 48-7. 2018, 65-31. 2017, 41-9. 2016, 49-30. 2015, 27-14. 2013, 52-0. 2012, 52-0. 2011, 38, 14, 2009, 35, 7, 2008, 49, 14. Those are the other games that Arkansas has gone up against Alabama. And needless to say, it's never even been close <laughs> for all intents and purposes. The games have never been close. Alabama has been dominant many times. Not only have they won every game, but they've just been downright dominant. And so it just kind of gives you an idea to where, I don't know how you feel as a Razorback fan, but how I feel Every time I go into this Alabama game, I immediately just get the vibe of, you know what? Just the loss. And it's not even one I get mad about. It's not even one that I care about. Like, I look at it as it's an L before the season starts. I don't care how good I'm feeling about Arkansas. I don't care how confident I'm feeling about Arkansas. I'm always looking at that game and saying, it's a loss. It's not out of hatred. It's not out of 
defeatism even I, like, I don't even look at it that way because y'all know me like I I sometimes I mean I thought this team would go eight and four nine and three this year like I am the optimist but it's just a matter of until Arkansas actually wins this game against Alabama I'm never going to believe or pick them to win this game because it's just another level of competition whenever you go up against the Crimson Tide but just for funsies as down and as Dadgum near impossible as it may be for Arkansas to actually win this game. I want to look at it and see the impact that it would have. Because, again, we do this for all the games. But without question, to me, the biggest impact of all the games this season that Arkansas could win, and if they did win, would have the biggest impact would be this game. It would be the Alabama game. And the reason being is not just because you've lost to him for so long, but it's in the way you've lost to him as we went through the different games and just how you've been blown out in a lot of these matchups. That's what would be a big impact and actually go a long way. It's just how long it's been. So what if Arkansas did the unthinkable? What if they went into Tuscaloosa and found a way to win against Alabama? Well, first off, Sam Pittman saves his job regardless of what happens the rest of the way. Arkansas could go 3-9 and nine this season, but if their win and lone SEC win was against Alabama, Sam Pittman keeps his job. And I actually don't even have a problem with it. Like, think about that. Now, again, you probably disagree, but like, think about that. I believe that it's that impactful to where regardless of what happens after the game, if Arkansas wins the game, not only does Sam Pittman keep his job regardless, but... A lot of these players that would be on the team, and you know, in the case of KJ Jefferson, a quarterback, would be revered and remember and Razorback lore for years to come. Because you it'd be hard pressed to find a game or a series in college football against conference foes, against division foes, which I know divisions go away to next year, but you'd be hard pressed to find a longer losing streak against them than what Arkansas has. Like Tennessee had that even longer against Bama, but they ended that last year. Mississippi State, they haven't won since 2007, but granted, still won in 2007. There is no team that has gone longer without beating Bama than Arkansas. So immediately it goes in down in history, becomes one of the upset of the ages. And I would even make the argument that when it comes to regular season games, it would be the biggest upset and the biggest game, biggest win in the regular season that you have had probably since beating 2007 LSU down in Baton Rouge because of just the aura of Alabama and and the presence of Nick Saban and, and what he is and who he is and how he is and how he's done it all and everything. Like it is another level of incredible like feats if they were able to do that. But also it would be something to where maybe this team for all the stuff that we've talked about, I mean, all the issues that they've had with their struggles, with their poor play, with their poor decision-making, with the poor coaching and all of that, this would be the type of win that you would think, and I would think, would catapult them into a level of confidence that they didn't even think possible. To where possibly, even though I talked about worst-case scenario going 3-9 and nine or one game being against Bama, but possibly being... To where suddenly the floodgates open and this team has so much confidence in what they're doing and how they're doing it that they're no longer afraid of anyone left on the schedule. They go out and they take care of business against Mississippi State. They go to Florida and win. They, they beat Auburn. They beat Missouri. Like They beat everybody in their path because suddenly the, the, the confidence that they have in what they're doing is there. The swagger is there because you just beat Ala frickin' Bama. You beat Nick Saban. You beat a team that you haven't beaten, again, since 2006. And with that confidence, it can catapult you into having more success this season. Now, does that change what happened earlier in the year and and the missteps and the misfortunes? No, it doesn't change it, but it certainly makes it better. Certainly makes it better. And honestly, if and we can end on this one as far as what it comes to Arkansas beating Alabama, but if what if they beat Bama? I think from the national perspective, just looking at it realistically, 
from the national perspective, every single college football expert, writer, television, radio show host, or whatever across the board, it would not be about Arkansas beating Bama. It would be about the legacy and the downfall of Nick Saban in Alabama. That's what it would be. They would say, fine, this is, this is it. This is the end of the end. You know, they kept messing around. They had some nice wins. But if you lose to Arkansas at home, this is the beginning of the end for Nick Saban and his tenure at Alabama. He's lost his touch. He's lost his fire. Alabama fans would be calling into every show from here to Hanoi, calling for Nick Saban to resign, saying they need to go get somebody else. Like, no one would care that it was Arkansas that beat Bama. They would just care that it was Alabama who lost to some team in the SEC West that they've beaten so much. Like, they wouldn't care. But you know what? We would, wouldn't we? We'd celebrate it. We'd love it. We'd get pumped up. We'd get excited. We'd celebrate in style. We'd pop some champagne bottles. And we'd love it and revel in it. And we really wouldn't care what the rest of the nation felt or what they said. We just feel good because we beat Bama. So that would be to me what would happen. What would be the impact? It's almost like confusion and frustration and weirdness. But I'd take it, wouldn't you? I wouldn't mind beating Alabama. Even with all the things that's happened this year. You can still be mad. You can still be upset with Sam Pittman. You can be upset with the team. You can be upset with what's been going on. But if you beat Bama, you're going to enjoy that. At least for a day. At least for a night. You're not going to worry about what happened as the season went on in the first half. Like, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. Don't think it's going to happen, but you'd enjoy it at least. Folks, I got to tell you about the Jace case and how it provides five life-saving life saving antibiotics for emergency use. And it is the easiest thing to do when it comes to getting these things that makes you prepared because you don't want to be caught unprepared. Everyone should be empowered to take care for themselves and for the loved ones when the unexpected things happen. And Jace handles everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultants and care. Uh, they have a lot of different things to choose from when it comes to certain things that you may be dealing with when it comes to pain or uh, any sort of uh, shortages that are having and going on in the nation for any sort of medication. Uh, they can help you out in finding those medications that they provide and getting it to you in a very quick thing. We always know is with the reliance on supply chain issues. Like there's times where you need these life-saving medications, but you can't have them because of these facts. And that's what Jay's case is able to provide you with a peace of mind, just in case of an emergency. No one wants anything like that to happen, but in case it does, you want to be ready, and Jay's case is going to make sure you are ready. So get $20 off of these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using promo code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Again, $20 off the life-saving antibiotics that you need today at Jace Medical by promo code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. You are Locked On Razorbacks. Your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I just realized, too, when I was uh, listening and watching Sam Pittman's press conference and, uh, you know, what he talked about on Monday and recapping that a little bit, you know, one of the things that he said that really triggered me a little bit is, uh, is essentially saying we're close. And I laugh really. The reason I'm laughing about this is because Andrew Ellis on Hogsports.com titled his article kind of the same thing that I titled my uh, little headline, if you will, uh, for today's show segment about how close are the Razorbacks? Because that's what I heard. And I think he was kind of the same like mine. So uh, great minds think alike. But either way, uh, Sam Penn was talked about, you know, things that he's just trying to do to keep things afloat and keep things going, which I get and I respect. But now that Arkansas has lost four games and the way that they've lost them and, and sometimes that they have been some close games because they're all been one possession except for one game. It's, it's frustrating and no one wants to hear that. Like I, I'm, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, I don't care about if you lost by one possession or not. Like I don't care. But in Sam Pittman, he, he did say this quote, he says, it's a whole new feeling since I've been here. In other words, we're, we've always started three and zero. you know, well, not the first year, but the last two years we were in the top 25. I think BYU game really lingers over and they're four and one and they have a good football team and I'm not taking anything away from them. 
But I think that the game, that game really is the one. Because if you look at it, you go play your heart out at LSU, you play a pretty good game against AM. And the other night we're leading in the fourth quarter, but we're losing. I'm not concerned about do we have talent and things of that nature to win. It's where we are in our head. Each Saturday we go out there and we're playing hard. We're getting better. We've just got to be consistent. We're close. I just know to the outside world, it doesn't look like we got a very good football team. I think we do. We've just got to go find a way to win in the end. So people can take this in different ways. And this was something that I hated from Brett Bielma. Like th- I, there was a lot of things I didn't like about Brett Bielma, but especially towards the end of his tenure at Arkansas, he was a much more savvy person with press conferences and media than what Sam Pittman is. And that's fine. But I remember the things that got, always got brought up with Sam, uh, with Brett Bielma is that I know they went through that stretch where they were getting like they were just housed by Auburn in 2016 by 52 to three, and people were mad. And it was like, hey, he's 11 and four in his last 15 games. Great, those 11 wins are against teams that don't even have winning records, and it goes into the season before. Like that doesn't do anything for me. And it's kind of the same thing. Once and Brett Bielma kept saying, you know, we're close, we're close, we're close. Well, you went four and eight, my man. You went one and seven in conference play. You're not close. Close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And it's the same thing here with Sam Pittman when he's like, we're close. Now, here's where I make a differentiation between Pittman saying it and Bielma saying it. And you guys can say it's cop out, but I'm being real about it. When Pittman says that in context, like I just read about where they're close, There is at least a little bit of truth in that. No one wants to hear it. I'm not accepting the answer. I'm not. But there is a little bit of truth in it. Because, again, you lose to BYU by a touchdown. You lose to LSU by a field goal. You lose to Ole Miss by a touchdown. You know, and and you've had three one-possession games this year that you've lost. That's the reality. And by that fact where I think LSU is a much better team than Arkansas. I think Ole Miss is a much better team than Arkansas. BYU, eh, you still lost the games. But I think talent-wise, you know, there's there's an element to it. But my point is, when you are in these one-possession games and they are close as being thrown around, it is true. But the problem is, is that you've been close for a couple years now. We know about last season and how many one possession games Arkansas lost. Lost to AM, lost to Liberty, lost to LSU, lost to Missouri. One possession games. And this year you've lost three already by one possession. I don't care about how close it is. You have to be the one that finds a way to win those games. You have to be the one that finds a way to close out games when you have a lead in the fourth quarter. You have to be the one that comes up with the big plays. Sam Pittman knows that. But this team has not rolled over and died. They have not given up on the season. And from that perspective, yes, they are close. But again, close isn't enough. Close isn't making me happy. Close isn't making you happy. No one cares about being close. You know, you don't go to a better bowl game if you go six and six. Be like, well... You only lost three games by one possession. No, you're not going to a better bowl game. You're not getting more money. Like your contract doesn't get extended because of that. Well, sometimes it does, but it's dumb if it does. You don't get the benefits. You don't get any sort of attaboy by having close games at the end of the day. But I just, until I, again, it goes back to the whole thing when I talked about with like, Playing Bama until I actually see Arkansas win a one possession game, I'm not going to believe that they can. And if you can't, that's what's going to cost you your time. Like Sam Pittman, imagine just for fun, imagine if Sam Pittman had won every single one possession game. Just I know it's I know it's not always going to happen, but just imagine if Sam Pittman had won every single one possession game. We'll throw 2020 out. Let's look at 2021. Arkansas lost the Ole Miss by one point. They win that game. Lost to Bama by a touchdown if they win the game. They win those two games right there. They go 10-2. 10-2. and Because the other games that they lost, they got smoked by Georgia. They weren't going to win that one. And the other one was Auburn at home, which they ended up losing, I think, by two possessions. Still kills me. But you go 10-2. and 
And then last year, we know, we just mentioned four games. That Arkansas went six and six. They had four losses with one possession. You win those games, what's your record? 10 and two. And this year, imagine what the season looks like if you just won your one possession games. You have one loss. You're five and one. I know that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's about wins. But if you just find ways to do it, it's great you're competitive. But until you get those wins, and, and like, and also like, think about how Sam Pittman would be viewed right now if he had went ten and two, ten and two, and then this year he's five and one. Like people are going nuts. He's being a top five team every year. Like it's incredible. It's not the case. You can't be close. You just got to be good. You can't almost win. You just got to win. That's all I care about. There's a little truth to it, but it ain't, I ain't buying it. Until I see it happen, I ain't buying it. We're going to talk a little Razorback basketball, actually, on the other side of the break. But first, folks, I got to tell you about Prize Picks against one of our newest sponsors here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks and all that, all you got to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's a really simple thing to do. And I can tell you for somebody as like me, where I might not be into all the spreads and all the money lines and all the parlays and all that stuff and everything, because you know, it's a little bit over my head and gets a little complicated. I like just giving me the choice because I like to be like, okay, is this player going to do this? Cool. Boom. I'm going to do that. And that's what I got with prize picks. I'm saying, no, it's going to be more than this. Boom. There you go. Or it's going to be less. Boom. There you go. Making money on it. And prize picks is incredible when it comes to that with the NFL and college football. And what's great about it too, is they have a reboot policy where your entries stay in play, even if one of the players gets injured. For NFL games and college football top 25 matchups, if you have one player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second half, the player is rebooted. And Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with that injury insurance. So head over to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, head over to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use promo code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I want to bring up a little basketball as we're getting closer to that. And there's not anything new or that has changed or really uh, anything like certain that's, you know, made me bring this up. For any for any reason other than I just wanted to, um, but it's it's amazing how Eric Musselman and the Razorback basketball team keeps the energy going, and I I, I know that there's so many people looking forward to basketball season because the bas- the football season has not gone great. It hasn't gone the way that people have wanted. It's not gone the way any of us have wanted. And here on my podcast, you know, I, I like to look at numbers, and it's amazing. First off, again, we're the number one Razorbacks podcast in the world, and I appreciate each and every one of you for making that possible. Um, but during this time of year is usually where our views are really up, our downloads are really up, um, the subscriptions and the subscribers are, are really up. Like everything's up because it's football season. But in the Locked On College Football Podcast Network, like we have a podcast for each and every Power Five program, each and every Power Five program. And then we also have every Power Five conference, I believe, a podcast, whether it's Locked On SEC or Locked On Big 12, whatever. And so there's a lot of podcasts in the college network and perennially this podcast is in the top 10 in both downloads and watches, which, you know, you may think like, okay, we're cool. Top 10. But if if you talk about every power five school, every school in Arkansas, the Razorbacks, the little state over here, like you think that that's really, you know, getting people's attention. Well, the numbers speak for themselves, but I say all that to say this as football season's gone on. And again, I know the team struggled. Last week, when I did my recap of the Arkansas red-white basketball game, it was kind of thrown together. It wasn't as uh, beautiful as this podcast that I'm doing now as far as graphics and everything. The internet sucked, so my recording wasn't great. I did it right there in Barnhill Arena. 
some of you who watched it probably saw like me glitching a little bit because of the internet being so terrible. I was kind of embarrassed by it because I'm like, man, I, I hate doing low quality stuff. I hate having like like my my opinions and my takes could be low quality because you know sometimes they are. But as far as the product itself and the pr pr presentation of it, I'm very I'm very proud about that, and I I try to put a lot of work into that. And when I saw that, I'm like, man, I, I almost I almost wanted to delete it. I almost wanted to delete that podcast because I didn't like it so much. But then I look back on it this week, and I had a water cooler meeting with uh, everybody in the Locked On College Podcast Network, and I saw that the views and the downloads for that one particular podcast, I think on YouTube I got 8,000 views, which is pretty significant considering like, I have close to 8,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Uh, but to see that many people watch it for basketball in the middle of football season, mind you, recapping a red-white basketball game. To see that, it, it shows with everybody there in the College Podcast Network, they're like, how? How? You're, I mean, Duke, okay. North Carolina, okay. Kansas, okay. Like, but how, how are you with basketball getting one of your most downloaded, most watched podcasts, especially when the quality wasn't that great, for basketball? And it, to me, it's all about that energy that Eric Musselman has brought to the basketball program and also goes into me believing that Arkansas is still, to this day, a basketball state. It's a basketball school. We love our basketball. And so I just I get so excited when basketball season comes around because I think people care so much about it. You all care so much about it. And it's not to care. You don't, that doesn't mean you don't care about football or baseball or anything. You do. But I even get the go-ahead, which is so funny to me. I get the go ahead from the podcast network where, you know, everybody else, usually they're like, hey, don't talk about basketball. Don't talk about baseball, you know, during October. It's football nonstop. Do not stop. I'm like the exception to the rule. My podcast here is the exception. They don't get it. They don't, they don't understand it, but I do. We do. Razorback basketball is a very big deal. And the fact that that was the most like watched and downloaded thing, I think says a lot about the basketball program or football program and, and how it's not going great right now. But I think it also says a lot about you fans and what you enjoy the most. So I just thought that was so cool. And every, I just laugh every time I see it because, again, people don't understand it. People don't understand it, but we do. And so I'm glad the energy's there. And I know football still got some things, hopefully, that can get going a little bit better, but can always count on basketball to keep it fun and keep it entertaining. There's no doubt about it. Appreciate everybody listening and watching in to the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, and we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel. Tomorrow afternoon, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.